Good evening, everybody. Hope you're all doing well on this lovely Wednesday evening. And thank you for joining us. If you're looking to hire out your camper van um, to make some extra money, um, if you have a camper van and you want it as a form of investment, or you're simply looking to make some money from your camper van um, during the year when you're not using it, these are all great reasons to um, consider hiring out your camper van. And this workshop is going to cover that process in full. Um, it's going to look into things like handovers, insurance, DVLA, reclassification, all the nitty gritty stuff. And we're going to show you how you can maximise your income when it comes to hiring out your camper van. Uh, Laura is going to be um, heading up today's workshop. Laura is in charge of recruiting all of our quirky camper vans. Uh, she guides new owners, listing their vans, offers technical advice, and she's also responsible for looking after all our current owners and for maintaining and developing the converter directory. So she is the woman in the know. And just a fun fact, Laura has her own conversion company. So she lives and breathes camper vans and camper van conversions. So without further ado, Laura. Hello everyone and welcome. And thank you, Lindsay, for that marvelous introduction. <laughs> Um, as Lindsay said, I've, I'm responsible for um, onboarding new owners, and it's something I absolutely love doing. Um, it really appeals to my my nerdy side, chatting to everybody about their new builds and looking at everybody's lovely vans. Um, my aim with the workshop is to give you a, a really good insight into what it's like to hire out your van and make you fully aware of the pros, cons, um, the likely income and expenditure and how, how to deal with certain things that crop up. Um, and it'll hopefully enable you to decide if it's something you want to do. We obviously hope that lots of you will come away and really want to do it. Um, you know, and I can't wait to see lots of your vans, um, but we completely understand that it's, it's not for everybody. And that's the reason for this workshop, just to sort of enlighten you all. Um, anyway, enough of me rambling. I will share my screen and I've done a, a presentation, which if you were at our last, uh, renting out your camper van workshop. It's similar, but there's a fair bit of added new content as well. So I'll just do that. Laura, I'll just say um, just one final thing before we get started. So we are going to have question breaks throughout the presentation. Um, so these will happen um, throughout the presentation. So if you do have a question, um, please pop it in the chat box. We're lucky enough tonight to be joined by the majority of the Quaker Campus team uh, in the chat box there. So if you do get a response and it's from QC Lauren or QC Ellie or QC Lucy, <laughs> had to slip that one in, um, then that will um, be from the team itself. So you can um, be sure that the answer that you're getting is, is from the, the quirky source. Um, but like I said, we're also going to be taking question breaks. So I'll be looking through the questions as they're coming in as well. And I'll be picking a few out that we're going to focus on during those question breaks. Fab, thank you. Um, can you see my uh, presentation okay? Great, right. So, first thing we want to talk about is why would you rent your camper van out? Um, and I think an important thing to consider is how many days a year do you actually use your camper van and how many days does it sit there on the drive not being used? And then you can think about, you know, uh, how you could get a bit, a bit of income from it whilst it's not being used. For those of you that have a van and use it a lot yourself, other people might be thinking of it purely as an investment purpose so um biggest reason you'd want to rent it out is probably to earn extra cash um it can be a main or second income for people there are people out there with businesses that solely hire vans out um, as their their main source of income and then there's other people that top up their income uh, by renting their van out it could be an investment so people buy vans rather than a house because the the actual return on investment is really good on a van and it's low depreciation which we'll get onto a bit further down the slide so it's actually a really good investment opportunity um it keeps your van running um rather than it being sat still for long periods um it's not especially during the winter it's not great to just leave them sat on the drive not going anywhere so it stops things from from seizing up and things going wrong um and so i thought i'd talk about the pros um of hiring out your camper van and then go on to the cons so obviously a big pro is regular income um and speaking from experience it's really nice to see um a regular monthly amount coming in um, rather like a, a job. 
Um, it keeps the van running, as I mentioned before. Um, it's a really good return on investment. Um, low depreciation compared to most vehicles. In fact, at the minute, there is no depreciation and it's actually go they're going up in value, which is amazing when you think about what it used to be like with, with cars and most vehicles. Um, and the cottons. So it is a tie. You, you need to be around to be able to do handovers and be there to sort things out. So, um, you know, for those of you that go off traveling a lot, it might not be for you. Um, having said that, you know, there might be people that are around to help you when you are around, when you are away. Um, so it's not always, you know, a complete deal breaker. Um, there is a, an element of damage that might happen to your vans. And that's kind of something that you have to prepare yourself for. Um, like, you know, if you were running a car hire business, th there is the, the chance that the van might get damaged whilst it's out. Um, and breakdowns. Um, so, I mean, with breakdowns, you're limiting um, the amount of breakdowns you'll have by getting a newer van with, with lower mileage, um, as opposed to an older van with higher mileage, you know, that's more likely to get a breakdown. Um, and, you know, we obviously always make, make, pe make sure people have a breakdown policy in place and we have ways of dealing with it, but it's, you know, it can be stressful nonetheless. So how much money can you make? Um, I'll go through the facts. It's a very difficult one to tell people. So, you know, I often have phone calls from people and they'll say, well, you know, what can you tell me what I'll make per year? Um, and it, it's, there's so many factors involved with each van and everybody's individual um, circumstances. So I can tell you our facts as a company. Um, so our vans rent out between 60 and 150 nights per year. Um, and the van prices vary both van to van according to the spec, the number of berths um, and the sort of overall look of it and the conversion quality. And it also um, fluctuates across the seasons as well. So you'll get a lot more during the peak summer season versus the low winter season. The average amount per night after our commission is £75. So you can kind of do a quick tot up there. If you, you know, you've got the maximum of 150 nights times 75, you can come up with, I think it's figures somewhere 11,000 something or other. Um, so the income is likely to be somewhere between five and a half thousand to 10,000, but top performers can go well above this. Um, and that's net income, not gross. So that's after, you know, your commission and the various costs involved like maintenance and insurance. Um, we have got a really good um, income generator, which I'll get one of the team to pop in the chat box. Um, it basically means that you can pop in your individual circumstances, your van details, where you be your base, how many days a week, uh, how many days a year you use the van yourself. Um, and you can put all that information in and at the end of it, it will give you a realistic income um, for your individual van, which is really handy. Um, so if you want to go away and use that after the call, that's, that would be really great. So is hiring out for you? Um, if you've got previous experience in renting out a house or doing Airbnb, then that's a massive plus. Um, you'll be used to dealing with, with customers and the various uh, things that go along with that. Um, you have to be quite a people person to do the job. Um, and the big one of the biggest things is being able to depersonalize it and actually treat it like a business. So you have to ask yourself if the van goes out on hire and it comes back and it's got, you know, something broken inside or it's got a dent. Are you able to kind of deal with that and think, right, I, I can just get it fixed? Um, you know, it's a sort of put it aside, depersonalize it and think it's fine. You can just get it back to how it was. Or are you likely to get upset about it because it's kind of your prized possession um, and you don't really want the thought, don't like the thought of somebody kind of mistreating it, as it were. Um, I think if you're the latter, it possibly isn't for you. But if you're able to think about it, and, I mean, the best way of thinking about it and the way I do is just thinking, I know it sounds terrible, but thinking about the money rolling in each month and that kind of makes up for the odd thing that you have to get sorted here and there. Do you have enough time to be able to sort issues out? Um, and is there somebody there that can help you if not? So when I, the last van I had on hire, um, I was over in Europe for quite a few months and I had a friend that did the handovers for me whilst I was away. You know, is there somebody that can do that for you or step in if you've got a full-time job and, you know, perhaps 
get cleaning done and help with a handover here and there. That's a big plus. Um, and, you know, you can perhaps agree a price with them to do that for you. Are you IT literate? So there is an element of uh, being able to use the computer uh, with it you need to be able to use our booking system and communicate with customers um, we're trying to get everything as digital as possible um, you know for obvious reasons we're trying to go as, as paperless as we can so you need to be able to basically use the basics of laptop um, and just speaking from experience your nerves do go better with time um, the first time that you know I, I hired my van out it went down the drive and you know I was really scared and worried and I spent the whole time when it was away worrying about it and it came back absolutely fine and then the more times you do it the easier it gets and the less you you actually eventually forget that it's it's out and you just look forward to getting getting the money each month um so yeah don't try not to think how you're feeling now isn't how you'll always feel <laughs> basically I thought I'd just go over some of the common barriers to hiring your van out and how to try and avoid them. And these are the things that I come up against quite a lot when people send photos in of their van, kind of the common issues that we have to get around. Um, so portable hobs is a massive problem. Um, so we fortunately, we can't take on portable gas hobs in campers. Um, they can't, we can't get a gas safety certificate for them, which you have to have to hire them out. Um, a lot of people will say to me, well, I'll just make sure that they only use it outside. Um, it's all very well, but if it's raining outside or it's, it's vile weather, they will use it inside. There's no question in that. And then, you know, if something happens, you're not covered and you may have a massive claim on your hands. Uh, you know, that's worst case scenario. So unfortunately, you have to put a fixed hob in there of some sort. You know, that it doesn't have to be gas. It could be a diesel hob. Um, you know, it, it's it's quite easy to get round and it's easily solved, but I know a lot of people have that in their vans. Um, induction hobs, we try to avoid. It, it, it's not beyond the question to have an induction hob in a van, but you need a really, really good electrical setup to be able to keep up the power it uses. Um, the problem you have is hirers don't necessarily understand the electric system in a camper van and they don't real, often realise that there's an unlimited amount of power. So the amount of power that an induction hob uses, you might end up having a flat battery quite quickly and then a, you know, a, a perhaps a not very happy customer and you're not going to be happy because you've got a flat battery to deal with. Um, so we try and avoid those. Um, but as I say, if somebody's got an amazing solar system and you know, really good battery power, then it might work. Um, and that goes along the same lines as having a low spec electrical system. Um, weight can be a problem. Um, so we have to make sure that the van has enough payload. Um, so that's the difference between the van, the total weight the van can carry versus what it weighs now. So the payload is that difference. Um, so we have to make sure that there's enough weight there for the hirers plus their belongings. Um, and the problem vans that we, we see that have weight issues often tend to be long wheel based sprinters, crafters, crafters and Ivecos and Lutons as well. Most of the Luton vans are over three and a half tonnes, so they then require a special licence, a C1 licence to drive, which then means that you get less people that can drive them. Gas, so you need to make sure that your gas system is all up to spec. Um, you will need to get a gas safety certificate if you've got gas in the van. So um, it's best to consult a gas engineer, you know, if you've got any worries about that to check that it is um, all up to spec and that you don't need to do any work to it. Um, unable to treat it as a business, as I mentioned before, it's that having that ability to kind of switch off and uh, just think about, you know, your money coming in each month. Um, not understanding how your van works is a big, uh, a big thing. So um, if you, I mean, this is often the case with people that buy them as investment uh, for an investment purpose. So if they've bought it and they've never used it themselves, it's then really difficult to explain how it works to a hirer and to do a handover guide or a video. Um, you know, and if they call up and say, well, this isn't working, they, they probably won't have a clue how to get get it working and won't be able to get them a quick reply um, so it's really really important for anybody no matter you know whether you're you use it all the time or whether you have got it as an investment purpose to actually get out in it every now and then and really understand it 
Another way of making even more money from, from your van is by having a really good selection of add-ons. Um, there's an endless list of things that you can put in um, and you can be really creative with it. You know, you can have the obvious things like table and chairs, a, a bike rack, down to things like an inflatable kayak and um, hampers. You know, there's all sorts of things. Um, I've just listed here some of the more common ones and the likely price that you could charge, but it's totally up to you what you charge for your add-ons. So yeah, fire pit and table and chairs are really common. Kayaks, um, an awning, and it could be, you know, a driveway awning or just a, a pull-out type one. Um, bike racks, bedding. Um, also, people quite often do collection and delivery as a fee um, I mean that's quite a good idea really because if you're taking the van to a campsite for somebody then you're actually limiting the likelihood of any damage happening by it being uh, driven so I think that's a really good thing to offer if you have the time um, and festivals as well you could offer to deliver it to deliver it to a festival for somebody um, just whilst we're on festivals we, we obviously have lots of vans that go to various festivals and a lot of owners I think get quite worried about their vans going to a festival they think it might get damaged or trashed whilst it's there um, but in my experience it's been the opposite the vans actually come back amazing and I think the pe type of people that pay extra money to go to a festival in a van are not the type of people that will probably do that um, I think the only time that it might be a bit more of a risk is if you had a, a very large van, perhaps that took, I don't know, five or six people and you've got large, you know, lots of groups of people in there, then there's more chance of that happening. But in general, it's a really good thing to offer because it's not doing all the mileage either. Um, so how to maximise income. Um, so these are things you can do to make sure that you have a really good first year um, or so many years going forward. So have a, however long you hire the van out. So Launching early in the year is really important so that your van's seen by everybody that's planning their summer holidays. Uh, if you don't list until you know August, September, then the likelihood is people will have already had their main holidays for the year. Um, so you probably aren't gonna do that well until the following year. Uh, being established on the site for more than a year is great because it means that you're probably likely to get repeat bookings and people know your van you've had a lot of social media presence with us um, that tends to sort of go in your favor um, having professional photos I can't stress the importance of this um, it may cost a bit to start with you know you may be looking at two or three hundred pounds to get a really good set of photos but it's worth every penny uh, pe it, people tend to look way more at photos than they do at the actual information wording on the listing. They'll just scan through the photos and go, yes, that's the one for me. If your photos are poor, they'll just move on to the next one. So do pay for the professional ones, unless you happen to be really, really good yourself and you've got a professional setup. Uh, being in the southeast, northern England and Scotland, which are our prime location areas for vans, um, that, that if you've got a van in that area, as long as you haven't got it blocked out for most of the year, you're pretty much guaranteed to do well. Close to population centres and transport links. So that's really important because if people um, want to just get the train to you, they can. And also, you know, some people will get put off if they've got to go on really, you know, lots of country roads to get to you. And then, you know, it adds on a couple of hours to their journey to get somewhere. Um, obviously this goes without saying you know having a top quality conversion um with extra berths a toilet and a shower the, the toilet and the shower has become an even bigger factor for people since covid you know people want to be self-contained and have facilities inside so that's really important to factor in so low income indicators would be launching after march um having poor photos and or a, a poor quality camper van and that's you know, obvious from the photos. Um, using your camper a lot during the high season. So if you, you know, you could, so basically how it works with Quirky is you can have your diary open and you can choose when you use it. And that's totally up to you. Um, if you do choose to have a lot of summer holidays yourself, then that means that, that when our peak season, when your van's like to be booked out fully with us, you know, if you're using it yourself, you're not going to get as many bookings. Kind of so it goes without saying then that your income is not going to be as high. 
Um, if you're unresponsive to people that, you know, contact you at the last minute to say, oh, I want to go away at the weekend um, and, you know, not taking on any discounts in the winter, then again, you know, you're not going to get as many um, last minute bookings there. Uh, being in the southwest, it's, it's a bit of a weird thing, the southwest. So I've got family in Cornwall and, it, and this seems to be a, a thing with a lot of people in Cornwall is they don't come out. Um, <laughs> once they're down there, they stay down there. So if you have a van down there, it's unlikely that you'll get somebody actually wanting to hire it to come up country. It, it's a very bizarre thing. You know, I mean, Cornwall's beautiful, so I kind of understand it, but it doesn't help if you've got a van down there and you want to hire it out. So the, the bookings that you get will be people that are driving down there to hire your van to talk on, which then reduces the amount of people. Uh, and then I think I said before, being very rural without any transport links to you um, will limit things a little. Um, so the first one, Laura, is how long does a white certificate last? Oh, forever. Unless you met with the only thing we would ask is if you made any major changes to the van, you know, you put anything extra on that would significantly change the weight, then you get it reweighed. But it's not something that we ask to get done regularly. And we've also had a question here about advertising with other sites apart from with us. So we don't allow that. The reason being is we have had it in the past where people have done that and they've ended up with double bookings, which then means that we have to let the customers down and it just doesn't make a good customer experience. Um, and, you know, often we'll end up in complaints. So um, we do ask that, you you know, if you choose to, to advertise through us, you just stay with us. We don't have any issues with you setting up your own website or um, advertising on your own social media profiles because you're in control of your own calendar, whereas a third party advertising site isn't. So that's the reason. Great. And I think this is a question that a lot of people will be wondering about, particularly if it's not something that's currently installed in their camper van. But how essential is it to have a toilet and a shower? Um, I would say some some owners don't i just think for the sake of having a, a portable loo that you know even if you haven't got a spot for it if you can secure it down some way even for just the driving it's great to have that as an option the first van that i hired out didn't have anywhere for a loo um and it was amazing actually i had it as an additional extra and virtually every person took it even though i said there is nowhere to have it it will need to be in the living space everybody still wanted it so I think it's really important to have it there just to ease people's worries about not having a loo. Um, and the shower is a similar thing. So even if you just have on a USB type shower or a, a solar powered shower, if it's just an additional extra and people can see that they've got that option, it just means that you're more likely to get bookings, you know, even if they're just using it outside um, for the sake of the cost, it's well worth having it there as an, as an additional extra. Right. So Moving on to return on investment. So this, uh, I try not to bog down too much on this, uh, but I wanted to touch on it for those of you that are thinking of, of doing this as, as a form of investment. Um, so for any of you that have got property um, as investment, you'll probably know that five to 8% gross return on investment is, is a good return uh, for property. A camper van hire can exceed 10%. Um, and if you're not familiar with, with return on investment, it's a very simple thing to work out. So it, all it is is your income for the year divided by the cost of the van times 100, and that will then give you a percentage. So we'll give you a few examples. Um, so a top performing van um, would, you know, cost probably bring in about £10,000 minus the cost. So that's your income there divided by 30,000. This is a very rough estimate of what the van might cost times 100 you get 24 percent return on investment there and then similar you know mid performer you know you're going down to 20 and then a lower performer perhaps down to 13. these are all kind of very rough figures just to give you a bit of an idea of what you're looking at versus you know the type of investment you get on property or you know stocks and shares and things like that so hopefully that sort of gives you an idea of it is that it is quite good so depreciation, I thought I'd touch on this. Um, they're not, at the minute, they're not depreciating like a normal vehicle. Um, in fact, 
I would say at the moment they're well they I know they're going up rather than going down which is it's crazy the market at the minute so currently if you keep a van for two to three years that there's no dramatic change and there's no dramatic change to the vehicle you know there's no massive dents or the engines failed or anything like that then there is no depreciation um the market's very strong um and we, we have sort of have to throw in a caveat there that it is subject to change like cars and houses and we don't know if they'll ever you know there'll be a crash in that but um, I think COVID has certainly had its part to play um, with people doing a lot of staycations and people wanting to go around on a, a camper van holiday. Um, and I can see that lasting for quite a few years yet. Um, so I thought I'd talk about the costs so that you're, you know what you're likely to have to fork out um, initially and sort of ongoing for the van. So the insurance will be around about £1,500 per year. I'll go into the, the nitty gritty of the insurance a bit further along. Um, your MOT, you know, about £50, depending on where you are. Uh, maintenance, somewhere between 500 to 1000 That's a very rough estimate. It could be much below that if you've got a much younger van. If you've got an older van, it could far, you know, go, go way above that. But that's kind of a rough guide for you. Uh, Weybridge certificate, I mean, £10. I, I pay £3 um, locally. It could be much less than that. You can go to scrapyards as well rather than an actual uh, Weybridge to get that. Tax, roughly £250 a year. And then your gas certificate, which is £75 a year. Um, thereabouts, could be more, could be slightly less. How how choosy are we? How choosy are we at Quiz? <laughs> um, <laughs> I th well, we have to be careful because we essentially we are a platform and we want to make people's dreams come true and have fantastic holidays. So we need to make sure that a van is of a certain standard. Um, and not only that, you know, the, the, the clues in the name that it needs to be quirky. So um, yeah. I've got a slide later on that will go through what we really look for. But it needs to be, you know, hand built um, and have something a bit different about it rather than your kind of factory fit set up. So I think I think we're we're quite picky, but we're always happy to look at people's vans, even if they don't think they meet the criteria yet, and we can make suggestions as to how they could be improved to be suitable for hire. Excellent. And what about micro campers? I know one of the guys from the team's answered this question already in the chat box, but yes, I think it's good to address um, for the masses. Micro campers, do we accept micro campers? Yeah, absolutely. The only issue that can be a problem with micros is the, the hob situation. It's whether you've got enough room in there to have a fixed hob and the gas set up or you, maybe you put a diesel hob in. But yes, I mean, micro campers are, are great. And depending on the area, they can be they can do quite well for people. And final one for now, um, you did touch upon it slightly, but do we see the trend continuing with um with camper van hires post COVID, um, obviously it's been a really incredibly busy year for us. Do we do we think it's going to continue in the same way? Yeah, yeah. I mean we can obviously look at the the figures from pre COVID, and we have, have always had fantastic um, years. It's the summers in particular. You you always do well over the summer periods, and depending on your van set up, whether you've got heating, etc., and whether it's off grid, will depend on how well you you do during the winter. Um, but personally, I can't see it stopping for any time yet. And even if, you know, people stop doing quite so many staycations, they can still go to Europe in the van. And we, we had a lot of people that, that went to Europe before, um, you know, all the scares and the sort of extra restrictions. So once that's lifted, then we can see that picking up again. Thank you very much. OK. Any more? Uh, no. Nope. Now. Well, there is, there's lots, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just keep it, we'll keep the flow going. Uh, okay. no, that's it for now. We'll um, keep them coming in, everyone. We will um, we will pick out the um, a few for Laura to answer. So which vans perform best? I thought I'd give a bit of a showcase of uh, our best performing vans this year. Um, so you can see the trends that go throughout them to give you an idea, if, you know, if you think your van will do well. So the first one um, is Dietz, which is actually a, a new van. I think it was launched earlier this year, based in the southeast. Um, it's only a two berth, it's got, but it's got heating, a shower, a toilet, and some amazing add-ons. Um, and the owners are really lovely. They've been 
they've had fantastic reviews from all their customers and have just been a dream to work with. And that's kind of really shown itself um, with how well they've done this year. Um, the second one is the lovely Floyd, which is based in Leicestershire. Um, so the Midlands is also quite a good performing area for us. Um, this is another two berth with heating. It's got a pop-up shower and a toilet. Um, you can probably see the similarities between the style of these two vans. They've got quite the Scandi feel to them. Um, and when you look at them, they just look like, you know, very, very good conversions. Um, next one is Olla, which is based in London. That's another two berth with heating shower and a toilet you can see the trend that's coming on here um, and that one is it, they've got great photos and it just looks really really appealing um, you look at it and you just want to go on an adventure it looks very cozy um, oh, apologies for the poor photo on that one so this is Homer um, so this one's based in the northeast which is a really good location at the moment um, and this one is a free berth with heating and a toilet it's quite a compact van, but it's got so much space and storage, even though it's a smaller transporter. Um, and not that you can tell from that picture, but their photos are really good as well. And they're really experienced owners that I think, you know, they've just got a really good rapport with all of their, their customers. So you can kind of see the trend here that, you know, they've all got the sort of two to three berths, heating, toilets, showers, and they all look really visually appealing. So they're, they're going to do well and they're all based in areas that are are kind of top more top performing places so moving on to to locations so this is one of the the biggest factors with how well your van will do um, so our best performing areas are london and the southeast scotland um, we love having vans in scotland and you'll find that even if your van isn't in scotland it will probably go to scotland quite a lot on adventures um, the north, west and east and the Midlands. So if you're in any of those areas, um, you've got a really good head start. Um, I thought I'd go over what hirers are really looking for. Um, it hopefully will help you if you haven't built your van yet, it'll hopefully help you plan what you put in it, but also make any improvements to, to make your van more appealing as well. So having a shower, inside or outside it doesn't seem to make a huge amount of difference the vans that haven't got internal cubicles do um, just as well as those with external showers so as long as you've got that facility it doesn't really matter toilet it doesn't have to be fixed it can be a portable one but having that facility is really important heating uh, we do have a lot of vans without heating but they're probably the ones that won't go out so much in the winter um, a lot of people you know, they just don't want to go out and get get really cold and go cold in the winter so that's quite important to make sure that you get bookings all year round having a stylish and functional interior which really catches the eye so again just touching on professional photos just making your van stand out from the rest when people are looking through through all of the collection and making it pet and child friendly it kind of having an adventure in a camper van seems to go hand in hand with having um pets in particular so if you can be open to, to having even if you've got a small van perhaps just one small dog you know you can put caveats on that and say that you'll perhaps only take one small or two small dogs it really opens up the market and you know children similar similar vein right insurance so uh, I'll tr it's actually surprisingly simple the insurance it's the thing I get asked about the most out of all things um we work with a really great insurance company and they have two options available for owners. The first option is our annual insurance, which in our opinion is by far the easier and better value for, for money route. It costs around £1,500 a year, which covers the van and up to four main drivers. Uh, so you and any family members, partners, um, and then all your hirers automatically who meet the criteria so you don't have to send off paperwork every time you get a booking it's done automatically as long as they meet our standard criteria it's a lot less admin uh, than the other route that I'll talk over in a minute and yeah if you have over a certain amount of bookings per year this is definitely the better better value for money route <clears throat> so the other option 
is daily insurance, which we call pay as you go. So that is £19 a night, but you also need your own policy on the van as well. Um, you need to send insurance documents for every booking to uh, make sure that they're covered, which, you know, it's a bit of a pain, but for those people that are perhaps not in such a top performing area or a bit nervous about trying it, it's a great way to get started. So it's not something that, you know, we say you shouldn't do, but it, I think it might be a, a good thing. And for many owners, they, they'll perhaps try that initially and then suddenly get lots of bookings and then move on to the annual one. But it's a good way to get your foot in the door. Safety requirements. Um, gas safety certificate I've touched on already. So that's a yearly thing that you need to have and it costs around £75. Weybridge certificate around £10 and that's once, as we mentioned before. The MOT, which is obviously yearly and your breakdown cover. Um, and the breakdown cover, just to touch on that a bit further. So the insurer that we use, they have a cover in place, which means that they definitely cover vehicles on hire. You have to be a bit careful with some providers. Um, if you know you think, well, that sounds expensive, the one that they um, offer, you have to be really careful to make sure that whoever you go with will actually cover your van whilst it's on hire. And people have got into a bit of a sticky situation with that where you know their van's broken down whilst it's been on hire and they've refused to go out and recover them. So if you, yeah, as I say, if you don't use ours, then make sure that you've got that in writing to say they will cover you. DVLA reclassification, another question that we get asked about an awful lot. Um, it's not, the, the, the short answer to this, and basically we get asked, is it important? Do we have to do it? Um, yes, you do have to send off a letter to reclassify, but we can still take your van on, even if it's rejected or it comes back as a panel van with windows, which is the most common thing. It doesn't matter to us what it's classed as, as long as you've sent it off. Um, and done your bit and it's the same for the insurer as long as we've accepted it and it meets our criteria then it doesn't matter uh, but for those of you who want to know what they need to do to reclassify if it's important to you um, there's a myriad of things you have to get done so you have to have two or more windows a, a separate door to the living accommodation there has to be graphics on both sides so no stealth fans on this um, an awning bar, not necessarily an awning, just a bar, and it has to be a high top, so you can't even have a pop top to reclassify. Um, and in the internal features, you have to have a seat and a table, um, obviously sleeping accommodation, some form of bed, cooking facilities that are fixed, storage facilities, and yeah, has, all of them must be fixed apart from the table, which can be a removable type. Um, and there is a link there. I don't know if somebody wants to copy and paste it so that they can um, have a look at that in more detail. Um, why is it important? Well, it's not really. However, you do have a legal obligation to have the van accurately recorded on the V5, which is purely for identification purposes. So if the police um, are out and about and need to see what your van is, it's accurately put on the V5. Um, it might be a requirement of your insurance if you're not using our self-drive hire policy they might say that you need to have that sent off and your v5 be accurate that's quite a big subject but it, i think i hope hopefully i've eased you know and you, you realize that it's not a big deal for us as long as you've sent that application off so how do handovers work i thought i just this is very brief to give you a, a bit of a, a summary of how Sorry, on, yeah. I was going to say, Laura, do you want to add in an extra question break here? Because we've got a lot of questions, um, yeah. and I yeah. just uh, I feel like we can just bombard you in there. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Right. Yeah, should we do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, first question is, what would you say the average cost of? And then this is, I think it's the impossible question, but I'll ask it you anyway. What are average costs of converting a van to a camper van from scratch? Uh, I presume that's not including the base vehicle. Let's go with not including the base vehicle. So are we just, to, oh, and is it, do we think this is just materials or is this for somebody to get a commission? <laughs> it's, it's difficult, isn't it? I think, I think just if you were looking to convert from, yeah, a base vehicle, oh, any base vehicle to a camper van um, and hoping to have it rent, available for rental, what would we be looking for cost-wise? Okay. A bit of a ballpark, I, 
I think so if someone was doing a self build um I, this is a really hard question because some I, I see some ridiculous things where people say oh yeah I converted it for 500 pounds you know and you see the van and it's you know there's barely anything in it so to convert it to a standard where it's suitable for hire I mean you probably you need to be spending I would have thought a minimum of around 5,000 um but you know it, that is then upwards of that depending on how much kit you want to put in it you know how much what your electrical setup is um so I think you're looking at that as a minimum but it could be anything up to kind of 15 20 thousand if you were going all out so it's a really hard question to answer it is and I think as well it, uh, what comes into it it's not just about materials it, it also comes down to how much of that you'd like to do yourself you can save a lot of money by um you know through the self-build process if you're looking for a professional converter you're obviously going to be paying a lot more so it is kind of the impossible question really isn't it um I think the best thing and the best advice is is just to to plan and yeah not maybe overthink uh, areas or elements um and you could probably save a bit of money just just a really decent plan um and putting time into that there is a section in the ebook about costs so that's that'll be a really great place to to go and have a look at that with some different examples of different builds great we've got a juicy question here and it is would the qc hire me graphic count for dvla reclassification <laughs> I have no idea, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> I really, I really wouldn't know um, the answer to that. Maybe I don't even know whether David would know the answer to so, that. Yeah, David is in here. Maybe David can. Um, <laughs> David is the co-owner of Quirky. Maybe he's got the answer to that question. He is typing, so we'll see what he says. Wait with his breath. With the DVLA at the, the moment, who knows? That people seem to have some have luck and managed to get through quite easily and then other people just you know they seem to have met every bit of criteria but still haven't managed it um he's gonna hopefully jump in here and answer that question in person let's give him a second hang on david that work okay. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> sorry i couldn't unmute myself uh i think it, the most likely answer is no um, so people have been struggling to get that reclassification done that what it says is motorhome style graphics and uh, but that doesn't seem to be enough uh, any graphics don't seem to be enough for a lot of people so even professional converters doing 30 vans a year are just have stopped doing the reclassification um, process as in stop getting it but they're getting that refusal to say whilst it is on the inside a camper van it doesn't fulfill the external criteria um, and we we have basically if you're listed with quirky campers we are only listing quirky, quirky sorry we're only listing camper vans so if you're listed with quirky campers it is a camper van and our insurers alan boswell our insurers are happy they're satisfied with that so if we call if i call it a camper van or laura calls it a camper van or Lindsay calls it a camper van and, and you're hiring out with us, then it is a camper van. Um, and that's the agreement that we have with, with Alan Boswell. Fabulous. Thank you, David. How important is having heating in your camper van? I would say pretty important, to be honest. Um, you, you can get relatively cheap forms of heating put in, and it's well worth well worth doing to make sure that you maximise your, your winter bookings. I think, as I mentioned before, if you don't have heating, you're unlikely to get many people wanting to go away and freeze mm. in the van. So, I mean, it basically, you're, you've got a hotel on wheels and you have to think, would I go and stop in a hotel that didn't have heating? Yeah. Um, here's a good one. Uh, does making your van dog friendly help bookings or are people put off by the fact dogs might have been in their, in their van? It doesn't, it doesn't seem to i think the type of people that go on camper van adventures are the majority of them are outdoorsy people so they're unlikely to get put off by the fact that there's been dogs in there you know there might be some people with allergies that perhaps might not consider it but uh, you know some some owners do charge a bit more to have pets in the vans and you know they do a, a deeper clean and that's fair enough mm -hmm. um but yeah it's definitely a, a big plus to have that there and it opens up the market and how do we ensure the safety of campers that we have on our fleet? Well, the safety, the big two things are the gas safety and having the weight, um, you know, and also having, we always see photos of vans, obviously, before we say yes. And 
you can kind of tell a, an unsafe van from a safe one um, just by looking at pictures. So, you know, as I said, we're, we're fairly choosy, so we wouldn't ever take on anything that we thought might be unsafe. There is a slight extension to that question as well, and it is just uh -huh. about safety uh, in the form of um, renters mistreating the van, um, theft, um, all that sort of thing. I mean, there is, you know, we do obviously have each rental will come with a security deposit, which is linked to a card, nominated card. But if the, you know, the van is stolen, sadly, for any um, reason, it's um, it's taken, then obviously that's what your insurance is for. Yeah, I don't believe um, there's ever been a case of a van being stolen by a hirer. I think it's only ever been stolen from yeah. an owner's driveway. That would be awful. Um, <laughs> can, I, can I chip in? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, the the key thing that we that the insurance require um, so it, the insurance make an assessment on on the likelihood of this happening, and the things that they require are the things that prevent it. The key thing is a, a traceable form of payment um, that they, that that happens automatically through our book booking system, <clears throat> but also the hirer is required to provide proof of address um, and proof of ID. Um, and there are stringent requirements on on how that works. And it's to be honest, it's a bit of a pain to, to, to do. But we have a, a much higher level of, of checks than a, a normal rental company because the value of the vehicles that are being taken are much higher. Um, so that's that's how that's uh, secured. One thing that owners uh, are we recommend that owners do is, is fit a tracker um and this is uh but you need to be careful how that that doesn't that's not misused and it doesn't infringe on the privacy of the of, the, of your holiday makers but it's there as a as a backup so that if the you know if the vehicle um it, it, if you're un unable to make contact with the vehicle but it's not something that's happened to a quirky camper van um, and that's primarily because they are the the uniqueness of them, the, the individuality kind of marks them. Uh, they're, they're very difficult. They'd be very difficult to sell on. So it's really the, the only thing that a, a, the, um, a theft would be interested in would be the base vehicle um, and rather than the conversion itself. Motorhomes are, you know, you can replate them and uh, it could be any particular version of that model. And so they're much more resellable. But quirky camp folks, their, their uniqueness, their individuality uh, makes it much more difficult. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think, you know, there's definitely some on our fleet that, uh, you know, for example, if somebody nicked uh, Sophia, <laughs> they wouldn't get very far <laughs> without somebody noticing that uh, she was whizzing down the motorway. Great. Thank Dave, you. Dave. Dave was stolen by uh, outside of the owner's um, house and they the, the thieves just uh, left it in a car park once they opened the back and figured out that it was a camp van had a load of stuff in it because as far as they were concerned, they were just stealing a Ford Transit um, because it was quite stealth, uh, relatively stealth. Um, but then they just abandoned it because it was because it was a camper van. So it kind of works in our favour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they've mainly been white, that any that have been stolen, which is very mm -hmm. few, have been just stealthy white vans, haven't they? And all transits. I'm not sure why, but every single one of the like four that we've had that have been sort of in some way linked to, to, to us um, or we've we've promoted the keep it keeping a lookout um, have all been transits. Mm. Must be easier to break into somehow. Uh, one final question before we continue then, Laura. So uh, do we offer conversions? We don't as a, as a company, but we do have a fantastic converter directory, which has people all over the, the UK um, that, that do conversions. And some of them are quirky approved. So we, we know their work and are able to verify it. Um, and there's something for everybody on there with lots of different styles and budgets. So take a look at that. I'll move on to, to handovers and how they work. So you know what to expect on the day um, that you hand the van over to a hirer. So you would meet the hire at a handover location, wherever that may be. That might be at your own home or it might be wherever you keep the van, which might be on a farm or a lockup or somewhere like that. You would carry out your ID checks, which you may have already done in advance or you might do it on the day, depending on um, how you like to do things. There's a driver form that needs signing by both parties and then a vehicle condition report, which basically is like a, an external inventory where you go around and mark any dents and marks that are currently on the van. And then you compare that when it comes back and that you make sure that the deposit's taken as well before the van goes off. Um, now I'll, I'll sort of add in here that we do have a, a booking system, which um, is, you know, the deposit's taken on there and is usually done in advance of the handover day and it's normally done automatically off the hirer's card but it's, it's one of those things that you do need to check has actually gone through 
Um, you show the hire how the van works and the best thing to do with this is to actually send a video guide in advance, which will then speed up your hand over time. Um, and yeah, that usually they'll come with a few questions from the video and it, it just sort of speeds things up a bit. Um, hand over the keys, obviously. And when the van's returned, you complete a, a thorough check of the van uh, inside and out and then distribute the deposit accordingly. That's a very brief sort of skip over of how it works. And we, we have lots of documents and guides for owners when they actually come on board for how to do this. But that's briefly how it works. Ah, there we are. There's a question break. Shall I skip this one? <laughs> I'll skip over the next Wanna one. Want to skip that one? There are. Yeah. yeah. OK. Can I actually can I just ask you one one question? It's just a yeah. continuation of something that we um we were just talking about regarding insurance. So. Um, uh, Linda's asked if major damage is caused to the conversion, such as a hole in the pop top canvas uh, or anything, I guess, that falls outside of the security deposit amount. How is that um, covered? Is it by the hire out or is it by insurance? I'm literally just my next slide is about damage. Okay, hold that thought. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, the answer's coming. <laughs> right. So damage and how to deal with it. Um, so the general principles of damage are we take a £500 deposit on all bookings, which covers the insurance excess. Now, to the hirer in the T's and C's, we state that the excess is 750 And the reason for that is if, let's say you've got £500 worth of damage, but you've had to spend, I don't know, four or five hours running around trying to get it sorted, or you've perhaps done some bits yourselves because you're quite handy, the insurers will only pay to um, for invoices um, from a body shop or repair um, company. So it gives you that extra buffer to cover your time and any expenses that you've had to undertake yourselves. So as far as the hire is concerned, they've got that they are responsible for the first £750 of any damage. Um, if it goes over, then obviously that would then be into the realms of doing an insurance claim. Um, you have to kind of think about things sort of carefully. So let's say you have a claim which, I don't know, is £775 as, a, as an example. And this, this has happened to me once. I actually just swallowed the £25 for the sake of doing an insurance claim and sort of going through that process. So, you know, if, if it's only just slightly over, then you might just take that decision not to go through the insurance process. But that's sort of briefly how it works. Um, so the insurer will only pay for repair bills, not for your time taken, as I just said. Um, no betterment. So if anybody has hired um, rented property out, they'll probably know the term betterment for, from how deposits are sorted. Uh, so you can't replace something for something better. So let's say your hob has been broken. You can't replace it for a better one. It has to be a like for like replacement. You need to allow for wear and tear and the age of any items that are damaged and keep that in consideration when you're pricing for it. So if your worktop is 10 years old, you know, you you can't charge somebody for a brand new worktop. It has to be kind of a, a, a fair amount towards a replacement if it needs replacing. Um, it's really a good idea to have a body shop or a local handyman close to you who's sort of primed and ready to get work completed quickly. So if you, you know, the van's brought back and you've got some damage that you need getting done quite quickly before the next handover, um, you need to be able to quickly, you know, get somebody around to get that sorted for the next person. Um, and likewise with the body shop, if you can just find one that you know locally that you can nip down and get a quote between bookings then that's really handy and some some of them even give you quotes over an email if you send pictures as well so that's really that's a really good idea to do um some people get a bit worried about damage if they've got back-to-back -back bookings which can happen you know you might not have time to get stuff sorted between bookings if you've only got a day um as long as the van is still drivable um then and you've communicated with the the hirer, the next hirer, then you know it's not a massive problem. Um, most people will understand um, as long as you've communicated it. I think if some if the next hirer turned up and that there was a, a panel damage, then they're not being made aware of it. That might be a different story. But if you'd sent them a message and said, "Look, I'm really sorry, I can't get it done," then you know most people understand that situation. 
Um, we do provide a, a really comprehensive guide for damage and breakdowns for all owners. So you're not left in the lurch and we're always here to sort of give advice as and when needed to owners as well. So how to avoid issues. Um, this is a, a, a new slide that we've put in to sort of go over a couple of things that were raised in this summer's hires. Um, so use lots of labels. Uh, if you've got things that are a bit quirky in your van that people might not realise, you know, that they need to do, i.e. put catches on, um, you know, there's a, if you've got a water tank outside, put a label on it saying water. We have had a couple of issues where people have put a diesel in a water tank, you know, that's a, a, a bit of a problem. So put labels on everything um, and you have to think that hirers know nothing about a van. Um, you just kind of you have to think that somebody's never used a camper van before and that they don't know what each bit in it does and if you think like that then you're more likely to give a really comprehensive handover and people are more likely to understand how everything works um make all of your fixtures and fittings robust if you've got a latch that you think might be a bit dodgy get it replaced and put something really good on there um high res may not have driven a camper van before and realized that everything moves so you know they when they first drive it they might not break quite like you do and things might come open so make sure that you've got really good latches on everything i think yeah, i've said assume your hiring knows nothing um and use your van and learn how everything works so if you do if the hire does have any issues like you know they perhaps can't remember how the heating works you know exactly how to, to tell them to you know how to use everything and if there's any common things that that happen you know maybe there's a blowout on the heating you know how to reset it that type of thing it's a really good idea to install a reversing camera or reversing sensors to help people that have never driven a big vehicle before for the cost it takes to put those in it's worth every penny um, and make a video on how to drive a van i know that sounds a bit strange um to you you know if, if you've perhaps driven big vans all your life but a lot of hires may not have um, and if it's you know got any particular quirks to drive, you know that might be really handy to some hirers to have to have seen that in advance and may limit any damage that happens. Shall I? I might stop now. Is there any questions? Yeah. 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 Happy to have some. Yeah. Okay. So um, first one is damage to the van is um, is too bad for uh, the next booking, and you've got you know an upcoming booking. Um, yeah. Do we offer any sort of um, compensation for that? Yeah, so what we do, if, if that happens, we'll try, try our best to find them another van. That's our, our first port of call is we're straight on looking at who has availability and what we can get sorted out because we really want people to keep, keep their holidays and not be disappointed. Mm. Um, so that's the first port of call. If they can't, then there's a couple of options. We can either just refund them um, the amount for their booking or we can try and postpone their booking so that they're having it at a different time when the damage is fixed. Um, I think this brings us on nicely to the next question about the commission that we take per booking. Um, I guess yep. what this covers what they what the commission actually covers as part of each booking. Yep, so it's 21% including VAT is the commission. Um, and you, you know that's including all of the the admin the driver forms that we send out the use of the booking platform um and you know you, you all, oh, of your amazing, <laughs> all of your amazing marketing Lindsay <laughs> well you must have read my mind over what my next uh, question was going to be that I was going to ask and then answer myself anyway um before I do that the first thing to say is that not only does that 21 percent cover what everything that Laura just said but also the fact that we have a team a dedicated team uh, whose job is to ensure that you are happy and the renters are happy and we can help iron out any issues if there are any prior to your booking, during the booking, after the booking. Um, but yes, the 21% also covers um, social media coverage. And we did have a question just further up the page there about how we actually market your vehicles. And not only, oh, well, first things first, we, we rank so highly on search engines that um, we basically bring in more traffic per van than any other agency that you'll find, um, a camper van agency. Um, and then secondly, our social media platforms are now in excess of 260,000 followers across um, the board. So we use Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter, even Pinterest uh, to um, advertise your vehicles. Um, 
we use your imagery. So if you've got great imagery videos, this is all, uh, these are all things that play a part and form our social media content. That is a massive um, pull uh, to our website um, along with just, yeah, your standard Google search and also uh, blog writing that we produce, that Lauren produces, our marketing assistant, and also um, our newsletter as well. So yeah, our, you know, a big part of, uh, of the team uh, job is to bring uh, traffic to the website and ultimately uh, get more bookings for you um, and, and your and your camper. Mm. I think another big thing that you know that we have to offer is we have lots of other different services as well so we've got the converter directory we've got the sales platform and that all feeds in so you've got all the traffic coming to the website and we do get an awful lot of people that do just try before you buy so they they'll hire a camper van before they buy or convert one so that's another kind of lead in so next slide I just thought I'd this is I think I mentioned earlier I, I'd go through what we really look for in a, a quirky van so this is when I'm looking at vans that, that come in over email what we're really looking for so the big first thing is handmade which ties in with our our name quirky um, it has to have unique interiors or features not factory fit or made from melamine we're, we're not interested in any vans like that, that that those are kind of the type of conversions that will be on all the other platforms we're only really interested in the the handmade quirky ones um fitted cooking facilities not portable and some form of, of fitted sink and tap and generally well made with a, a consistent theme throughout um, those that don't have that don't tend to perform as well um, they have to be kind of quite stylish to to do well um, if you want to know more about hiring out, there's various different things that you can go and look at. So we'll perhaps copy and paste these links into the chat box if they're not already in there. So you can register for our FAQs if you haven't yeah. done it on our website. So if you click on, if you go on quirkycampers.com and then click at the top, rent out your camper van, you can register there and we can send out various emails with advice on. Um, they've got the ebook, which is a great resource if you're, uh, building a camper van at the minute um, lots of hints and tips in there and um, I've mentioned try before you buy so if you haven't got a van yet it's a really good thing to actually hire a van um, and see what you think to that van whether that works for you whether you'd make any changes it's actually really hard to know what you want until you actually try one um, and you can email us um, um, campervans at quirkycampers.co.uk thanks for watching i can see there's various questions about different yeah. locations um if you're i think there's quite a few to go through on here so perhaps if you email us the camper fans out we can give you a good idea you know individually on your location and how likely it is to to do well yeah i would say right now all of locations oh, yeah. uh, we we want to so we we've had a a, a jump in in traffic and in in ranking uh, recently we had a really really busy season uh, the FAQs are way out of date in terms of what they're saying. Uh, it's kind of pre-pandemic stuff. So Laura's been talking about 10K as the upper limit. We had, I don't know, a nearly a, 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 almost a dozen vans that punched way above 10K. Some of them are closer to 15. Uh, I think there's one that's even over 15. Uh, that That is the payout to the owners that we've had so far uh, this season. Um, so we, 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 we need more vans. We really, really do. I, I, I want to bring on lots more fans this year so wherever you are there are customers particularly for the summer months we've got way more customers than vans um by a, a yeah massive margin excellent thank you david without further ado if you can hang around for a little bit longer we're going to be joined uh by one of our owners mark hi mark pleasure hey, hey lindsay how are you doing I'm doing great. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, uh, we're really, really um, pleased to be chatting to you. I think it's just a great idea to have you and uh, just to sort of let you really talk about your experience with Quirky and tell us a bit more about Deets. Um, and yeah, if there's any questions, I'll, I'll grab them and put them forward to you. So yeah, fire away. Tell us about Deets and tell us about your experience with Quirky. Well, we, Lisa and I, my wife and I, were in the same position as many of you are right now yeah. back in January. Um, we, we listened to Laura's presentation. And, um, and we were opting to, to, to go for it with our, with our van. And um, actually everything that Laura has been through 
on the on the presentation I can vouch for. Um, it, it is actually it is kind of worked out like that. Um, uh, the certainly the advice about um, gas and um, and toilets and showers we benefited from that and we've we've had an incredible year actually with Deets. Um, one thing that the only downside is that we've not been able to use use her um, as much as as we would have liked to, uh, because um, the the system is really quite simple in in being able to put on there when you want to use it and when not to. And we kind of left it pretty much open. And we had one period from the end of from yeah from mid May through to July, and then again from the end of July through to the first week in September where we only had one day um, where Dietz wasn't out. Um, it, it's been an incredible year um, in terms of that. The demand has been really high. We, we kind of map, meet that criteria of being in the Southeast, um, but our van has spent most of the time down in Cornwall and Devon and up in Scotland. That's, uh, that's, where, that's where they've been. Um, I would really recommend doing a how-to video. That was something that another um, owner recommended to us and also sent a, 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 their version of the how-to guide, which was just brilliant and really helped us. And that, that made a huge difference, actually. It made the handovers really simple. Um, the first handover and the first rental is scary, but it does get easier after that. And you kind of get into a bit of a rhythm as to knowing what to do um, and how to how to make it move, uh, how to kind of get get quite efficient at it, and also how to explain your van to to others. I think that's the that's the good thing that that comes out of it. So um, yeah, I don't know if anybody has any particular questions that they want to, but it, for us, it's been a great experience so far. Yeah, th there's a few coming in, Mark. And um, I think the first thing actually, I just wanted to ask you is at what stage were you at when you watched our workshop back in earlier this year were you ready to go with the van or were you in the we conversion? weren't no we weren't actually we bought a half converted van a half finished van um one that had been pretty much built for van life but um but wasn't um wasn't wasn't ready for renting it had been built to live in and the circumstances of covid had kind of changed that person's um opportunity and so I actually spoke with Laura and asked for her advice on the van at the time and, you know, whether it was on the right path to be in a quirky camper. And um, she gave me some great advice on what to do. One of the major things I did do actually was I replaced the gas system. Um, and that was probably the, the best decision I made because it made it one safe, critically, and two really, really easy to use. And then um, because we have people come, that have never never been in vans before, and so having a having it really simple to use, and having everything really simple to use makes a makes a big difference um, for their experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, we have had a question mark about the what is your sort of best um, part of the experience of, of renting with us, and also what's been the worst. The best part actually was we had a, this renter really sticks out for me. She was she came out as a, a quite as a late booking. We had this one window in May, uh, sorry, in June, and she came as a late booking. Um, she kind of booked on the on the on the Wednesday or the Thursday and took it on the Friday and and went for um, uh, seven days. And she um, she just needed a break. She just needed to come. And she looked like she would have been in a real I don't know, just something she needed a break. Anyway, when she came back at the end, she was a different person. She'd had a great experience. Um, and actually that, that was the best experience for me actually, was seeing how she, she was almost like my daughter, the age of my daughter. And, um, and it just like she'd come back and had a great experience. Um, and it just refreshed her um, going back. So that was a neat experience, so kind of people-based. Yeah. Worst experience? Um, well, <laughs> we did have somebody come back and despite explaining to them how to how to drive the van, 
they had cut a corner and they put a little bit of a dent in there, a, 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 a push to scratch into the into the side. And um, that was a shame. I'm like, oh, it wasn't bad, but it was just, you know, it was a little bit of damage. Um, but really, we, you know, they were they were fine about it. Um, Quirky were brilliant in helping us um, just, you know, how to deal with that um, and deal with the um, the excess and things like that. And we got we got in touch with the body shop. They gave us a quote, and it not, it wasn't actually it didn't need it to be done through insurance because it was only um, a couple of hundred pounds mm. to do. And um, yeah, we just tagged that on, and we did that at the end of the season. Well, I say the end of the season. Beats is still going out. So <laughs> we managed to have I was going to say, yeah, I don't know if you've actually hit an end yet. <laughs> not really, not no. really. And that's because we've got a heater, um, indoor shower and um, and toilet. So and she's fully off grid. So that that keeps going. Yeah, no, there's some really good points there. And, and yeah, that, that, that pretty much sums up why I'm not you know, surprised to see booking still coming in for deets um, on a regular basis. We've got a few more questions, Mark, if you don't mind answering them. Sure. Everyone's really enjoying chatting to you as well. And I, and somebody did just say about your story about the lady who come back from that um, last mm. minute booking. And, you know, that, you know, take the business side out of it, take the kind of money making side out of it, just to see people return with your van and, and having such a, a sort of rewarding time away. It's kind of what it's all about a little bit, isn't it? You know, kind it, of it's, it all well. it's really nice to hear that, Mark, because that is exactly has always been my experience. And 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 I know not uh, not all owners have the same experience because they don't necessarily get the same joy out of it. But mm. I, I, you know, the first time you send your van off is really nerve wracking. But the, the you know, the, the change that you see in people like they, there's a lot of paperwork and admin and there's a lot to take in and it's quite full on. They've just come off the tube or the transport, whatever it is, you know, driving down the motorway. So they're, they're you know, freaked out by the whole experience. And then they come back and it's just like a different person. And they're super grateful for you, that, that you have, uh, you know, you've had that trust and, and shared this with them. And I, I love I love that. I, I, and it makes it, you know, it makes me feel great about own, owning something this what's what's effectively a massive luxury um and, and because it's not sat on my drive the whole time so that's i, I get a lot from that thanks david david is the owner of frida by the way everyone if you want to take a look so we've got mark deets and david uh is frida beautiful frida the queen of quirky campers as we like to call her um mark how much time a week do you spend on um or dedicate to hiring so how much do you think per week is kind of taken up your time's taken up with actually facilitating a booking preparing for a booking um, um to be, a popular camper as well it's yeah to begin with it was a bit it, it took a little bit more time but actually we got into i got into a bit of a rhythm of how to how to do it and i spend maybe a uh, um a, a couple of hours or a week for prepping for 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 new bookings coming through so um the the beauty of the driver form and the insurance things is that a lot of that can be done um, ahead of time as uh, as people you know send emails through with their driver forms with their with their um, um, their their uh, identification and things like that and so we have a form letter that we send out which kind of has details about the van and what to do um, and so I spend a you know. A little bit of time on that and I tend to work about three weeks in advance um, for, for that for that and then when we have it's then handovers really and that that can vary depending on now this time of year we're on shorter bookings so they're like three-day bookings mm -hmm. and so there'll be a handover in there but in the summertime we were we were doing minimum of five day but mainly seven ten day bookings so handovers were a little less in a little less um frequent yeah i think it's hand handovers probably take the mo most of the time and then every now and again there's things to do on the van just to keep a spick and span really i think it's like anything though organize organization is key isn't it once you've kind of done it a few times and it's become a bit of a well-oiled machine um yeah. you just you just prepare yourself and you, you organize and yeah i think that's um I think that's one thing to bear in mind. A um, couple more questions, Mark. Do you offer anything with a rental? So do you offer any hampers 
Ooh, yes, we lovely. do. This was a great piece of advice that Laura gave me right at the beginning. She said, you know, go wild with your add-ons. And so we've tried a few things on that. We actually offer all sorts of things. We, we've got, um, we've got um, uh, the normal things like towel, you know, towels and bedding um, and things. And we also have um, then some more obscure things such as a paddle board. We offer that. Uh, that's been out a couple of times. Mm -hmm. We've got a big bike rack that goes on the back. We offer that. We've also got um, uh, Wi-Fi and a projector that we offer uh, on that. That's become actually really popular, that one, since I, I added that mid-season. And that's become really, really popular. Um, the other thing we have is we, we've got a little partnership with a local, a local bakery that we're starting off. And so we have something what we call Deets Treats, which is a, like a menu of different, of different um, things for, for, um, for hampers. But we also offer a complimentary one um, as well. So that there's a little something, you know, David mentioned it. When people turn up, they're a little, they're a little kind of, oh, we've got here. We're ready for our, our holiday to begin. And I think having a little hamper in there, even if, especially if they haven't booked one, having a little something um, mm -hmm. has been great. And actually, one of the things that you did this year, which was really good, was the tie up with Rude Health. Um, that was a fabulous, fabulous piece of um, uh, marketing and co-promotion. And um, every single one of our renters loved that. Um, so that, that came through as well. That was really good. Cool. Just to clarify what Mark's talking about there, we have a partnership with Rude Health. Some of you may know um, they're an incredible company and they provide um, dairy-free milk alternatives. So almond milk, oat milk, coconut milk, and they have some lovely cereals. And yeah, each one of our rentals gets um, a bunch of cartons of milk and some cereal to go out with, with them on their trip. So it's just a really, really nice uh, touch. Um, but yeah, further to what Mark was saying about the hampers that he provides from Deets, you'll also get per rental um, or when you sign up with us you'll get a welcome pack so not only will that have the quirky decals in it but it will also have the um some washing up liquid with quirky branding on yeah. you'll get some mugs um mark you won't know about this because they're in the process of being made up but every van mm. is going to have um these lovely new um quirky mugs uh, quirky tea towel so yeah just some really fun cool little things just to kind of add to that experience um Right, uh, Ellie said she thinks we should be paying you for this, Mark. So thanks so much for your time. Um, thank you, Mark, seriously. And yeah, and I think one thing it goes without saying that, you know, Quirky, we're nothing without our fantastic owners either. So, you know, we work not only with Mark, Gold Star to Mark, but, you know, we work with so many great people. And you put in, you know, if you put in, uh, you know, the best you can, you're only going to get um, a better experience um, back at you. So thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us and have a lovely rest of your evening. Thank you, Lindsay. And thank you, Laura. Wonderful job. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. And thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.